As the impeachment push continues to rock Capitol Hill, former special envoy to Ukraine, Kurt Volker, meeting this morning behind closed doors. He has arrived on Capitol Hill for a transcribed interview with House Democrats. John Hanna is former national security advisor to Vice President Cheney and worked with Volker during the George W. Bush administration and came to know him well. Good morning, uh, John, to you, and thank you for being here in America's newsroom. So tell us what you Hi, know Sandra. about this man who's now behind closed doors with members of Congress. Well, I think he's exactly the kind of diplomat that Americans uh, would want uh, dealing with, with very high-level foreign policy issues. He's uh, a foreign service officer by training. He's worked European issues for a very long time, very tough on, on the Russians and their aggression in Ukraine, and a great promoter of uh, the cause of democracy in, in Europe and in the transatlantic relationship. If you were to say on paper what his job was within the Trump administration, how would you describe it? Well, he was hired by uh, uh, former Secretary of State Tillerson to actually try and deal with the, the terrible problem of the Russian incursion into eastern Ukraine and the, the war it had created there that was killing thousands of people and destabilizing a, an important part of, of Central Europe. And Kurt was the guy who was both trying to help solidify a very weak and vulnerable Ukrainian government, but also to try and figure out a way to de-escalate that conflict with Russia and maybe even advance some kind of, of political settlement to resolve the crisis. And now here he is wrapped in this political battle, called as the first key witness to answer questions as, probe, uh, as part of this probe into the whistle blower complaint. He is there voluntarily. This is not under oath. This is not testimony. This is a transcribed interview to reiterate that to our viewers. But what did you make of him being called as the first key witness in all of this? Well, I mean, Kurt really finds himself in the middle of this. He was, of course, uh, named in the whistleblower complaint as somebody who was dealing with both Rudy Giuliani and Giuliani's attempts to uh, interact with the Ukrainian government. And at the same time, he was, in fact, the face of the United States to the Ukrainian government trying to figure out and help the Ukrainians navigate some of the, uh, the different kinds of demands and requests that were being put upon them by the Trump administration. At the same time, of course, they're fighting for their lives, trying to uh, resolve this dispute with, with Russia and eastern Ukraine and Crimea. And, of course, that question is his work with Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. What do you expect from the line of questioning from those lawmakers behind closed doors this morning? Well, I think they've got it. You know, Kurt's got to explain what exactly was he trying to do in interfacing between Giuliani and this new government in Ukraine, the Zelensky government, trying to put these parties to get, to, together. Uh, was he, in fact, operating at the request of Giuliani and President Trump to bring pressure on the Ukrainians to actually get deeper into the into issues regarding Joe Biden and the 2016 elections, or was he simply trying to to mediate and 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 remove any of the questions the president has about about Ukraine in order to move forward the relationship and get the U.S. Ukrainian relationship back on track so they can deal with this very serious conflict in Central Europe. I don't have any insight to that, but I, I know that the committee will get a straight shot from Ambassador Volker. He'll tell them what he knows, and I think he'll be as, as honest and truthful as he can be with the committee in laying out the facts as he's, he, he sees them. Very interesting. Uh, Chris Murphy, uh, one of the Democrats on one of the committees uh, from Connecticut, he sits on Senate Foreign Relations. He tweeted September 27th, of course, that's the day that Volker resigned, uh, that Volker has a well deserve reputation for fairness, toughness, and integrity. But he went on to say that's why he's disappointed that he is wrapped up in what he called this mess. He resigned, Volker, as I said, September 27th, John. At that time, he offered no pu public explanation for his resignation. Could that have helped and gone a long way? 
Yeah, I don't know what constraints Kurt felt like he was under that he needed to actually report this out to the uh, committees in Congress for, that have jurisdiction over this matter, that there is an ongoing investigation and he feels constrained from doing anything in public yet. But I think at some point in time, it'll be important for Kurt personally as well as, as for the country to understand ex exactly what, what Kurt's version mm -hmm. of events is here of what transpired over the course of this summer. All right, again, he is behind closed doors right now answering those questions. Meanwhile, this fired Ukrainian prosecutor said he was told to back off of this probe into Joe Biden uh, and the, uh, the Biden-linked firm, I should say. We've obtained these documents from the Rudy Giuliani interview that showed this. Mr. Shokin, that fired Ukraine prosecutor, attempted to continue the investigations. But on or around June or July of 2015, the U.S. Ambassador Jeffrey R. Pyatt told him that the investigation has to be handled with white gloves, which, according to Mr. Shokin, that implied do nothing. What did you make of these revelations, John? Well, I've got to say, Sandra, that I know something about Shokin and his reputation for investigating corruption in, in Ukraine, whether it had to do with Hunter Biden's firm or with the broader plague of deep uh, embedded systematic corruption in Ukraine. He didn't have a shining reputation. Uh, he, he wasn't simply opposed by the U.S. administration at that time that he needed to be uh, relieved of his duties, but by the entire transatlantic alliance in Europe, mm -hmm. a lot of the international financial institutions had real problems with the fact that he wasn't pursuing corruption investigations. Now, if he's got real evidence, if, he's, if there are other corroborating witnesses and documents to the effect that intense pressure was brought on him by U.S. officials to go easy on Hunter Biden and that Ukrainian gas firm, well, then he ought to, he ought to do that. But until then, I've got to say, knowing this guy's reputation, I'm a little bit skeptical of any charges he's making at this point in time. But it, it, we need to get the facts, obviously. John Hanna, great to get your thoughts on all of that this morning. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra.